What's up you guys? So I have talked to a few people lately and they're wanting to get into hammock camping and they're kind of like me where it's like, yeah, it's a lot of setup. When I started, I fumbled with my tarp. My tarp was the piece of my setup that I did not like at all. I really, I couldn't stand it. Like it was, it was horrible. Um, I had a crappy tarp to start with because I went cheap you get the budget stuff when you're starting out everybody does that you don't dive fully in and buy the most expensive gear that you can normally you know well I don't I ain't got it like that and I'm sure most of y'all are like me you're, you're doing this on a budget so I wanted to have a way to help you guys make life a little easier um, Tarps can be a pain with the factory stuff that comes on them a lot of times. They're just not easy. Um, you got to tie a lot of knots. Uh, if you're first getting into this, you're not going to know a lot of these knots. I didn't. And I was a Boy Scout when I was little, but I don't remember most of that stuff. Let's be honest. I still had to learn some knots for this. I'm going to try my best to show you guys how to make these knots because they're very simple knots and they will come in handy if you need them. But I'm gonna show you guys a good cheap way to make a quick setup tarp where you won't be having to tie knots every time. And hopefully make your camping a little bit more enjoyable by making it easy for you. And you're only gonna need a few things for this. Um, what I did, I went off Amazon. I got a bare butt tarp. This is a nice lightweight tarp um it's gonna be good if you've got an acm lay hammock uh, i'll make another video on hammock setup and the way i prefer but if you can't wait for that if you just look up an acm lay hammock these bugs are flying in my ear <laughs> i think it laid eggs in my brain um so acm lay is you don't lay tree to tree, you're, you're angled. You get more of a flat lay. We'll go over that later. If not, like I say, there's a bunch of guys that have good videos on it. Um, now, this tarp is like 30 bucks on Amazon. Cheap tarp, it's gonna give you good coverage. I wouldn't use it if it's gonna be really heavy rain or if it's gonna be really windy and cold because this is not gonna give you a whole lot of protection but if you're expecting there might be a light rain shower potentially and this is gonna get you by um, honestly I'll probably use this most of the time unless I know it's gonna be a really heavy rainfall which I'm not gonna lie I kind of chicken out on some of those trips so this is gonna cover you about 30 bucks you've got a tarp I have not taken this out of here yet so uh, we're gonna have to undo the factory stuff, so you'll get to see that too. All right, I went to Academy and got paracord. Um, it comes with this carabiner on it, which you're gonna use for this, and you'll see that in a little bit. Um, paracord's not expensive. It does stretch a little. It's gonna wick water, so if you're gonna be in a lot of rain, I would suggest like some Zingit or something like that. Um, in that case, you can get a, a Dutchware gear wasp which is what my other setup uses my big tarp um, and use the same idea here you just do have to loop a little more and it's very small so the and the line is also very small um, so it's a little harder to work with transfer pole um, paracord not as lightweight either if you're a backpacker I wouldn't suggest paracord I would go zingit because it is smaller and lighter um, I carry all my stuff on a kayak. If you see me walking through the woods, some crazy apocalyptic stuff has happened and you might not want to be in civilization either. Uh, the kayak carries my weight and if I can pack it in there, that's it's easy, it's what I'm gonna use. I also picked up some shock cord. This is gonna be an experiment on my part. I've never done this, but uh, someone brought up something to me and we'll get to that too that made me think shock cord might be a good idea for this 
I also got the cord locks for the shock cord. Um, both this together was like five bucks. Uh, this is eight feet of shock cord. We're gonna use four feet on each side. We'll get to that. Now, the real money makers. You're gonna need a night eyes. Um, cam jam? I think it's called a cam jam. Um, if you just search night eyes, uh, that's the spelling. A night eyes uh, tensioner on Amazon. This will come up. I think they're about ten bucks. Um, this is gonna be for your tension end. And a couple little S beaners or carabiners. You're gonna use these to make a quick detach on your tarp stakes. Um, and I'll show you that too. So you got that. The only tools you're gonna need for this is a good pair of scissors. These got me through two years of warehouse work. I used to make these things called geotubes. They're pretty cool, you can look them up. Um, and I used this pair of scissors the entire time I was there and when they did the massive layoff there, they let me keep them because I was personally attached to my tools of the trade. And you're gonna need a lighter. When you cut this cordage, you need to burn the ends a little to prevent fraying. Um, and it'll keep it hold together so it's tougher. Um, but I'm gonna start getting this stuff out and switch over to my head strap and start giving you guys a bird's eye view of how I'm gonna do this. Uh, I may switch over to the tripod again for close-ups of the knots so that you guys get it good. Let's do this. All right, so I just pulled the tarp out. Let's see the brain in here if I get it flat. Fair butt. Um, it doesn't have any cordage attached to it. This thing's actually a little bigger than I thought it was gonna be. Um, it's supposed to be 12 foot long from corner to corner up top. Um, and 10 feet from that corner to the other. So it's gonna give you some decently wide coverage, which you can see by the shape. It's not your traditional, bleh, traditional tarp where it comes down like that, like a big rectangle. All right. Something's sneaking up on me, gonna eat me. We got our carabiner off. I started unraveling the power, paracord. The paracord, so your first knot is going to be your simplest one. I mean, it doesn't get much easier than this. I'm going to do, hope you guys see this good. We're going to come around. Well, I'll need more than that. Come around and just go under. All right. Simple enough. All right, so we've gone under. We're going to do, we're just going to repeat. So, I'm going to give you all a picture to look at while I'm recording this voiceover. Um, at this point, apparently my GoPro decided to start doing 30 second clips. Um, what I was trying to say was you want to double or triple that knot. That way you have um, it secured well. And then in the next clip, when you go to loop it around the tree, you just clip it and then walk your other end over. Um, because I think that got cut off as well, which I cover again in the next little clip. Sorry about that, and hope y'all enjoy the redfish picture. Alright. I really hope y'all's camera angle is good, because I can't get my app on my camera, or on my phone to work. So basically, you're going to crawl through the bushes. You're going to come around with your carabiner. And you're just going to clip this on to your cord. I'll see how that tightens down. So that's going to be stationary. Alright. So we're going to come down here. If I don't make a giant knot in this. Which I am definitely working on doing. Yeah, I've made a mess. What did I just do? Okay, we're going to cut that. That's going to be an outtake. Alright, I don't know what my GoPro's been doing, um, so if this footage is kind of jacked up, I will, uh, <laughs> I'll do a voiceover on it. Um, just in case, though, if you guys don't get to see that, I made a mess. Um, I never claimed to be a professional, so I'm gonna have to untangle this after I cut my length off. But just in case, we're gonna go back over here. We tied the knot to this carabiner. And 
you just want it on the end of your rope. You're gonna come around this tree, clinch down, and that's not going anywhere. You've got a good attachment. I measured out my length that I would like, um, which I found out these two trees right here are about the max width that I can set my hammock up at, so, which is why I'm using these. So I actually gave it a little bit extra. So we're gonna come back over here now. We're gonna cut our desired length of cord off, which I hope y'all can see this. So you see how it jacks up the end even with my decent pair of scissors? This is why we need the lighter. So we're just gonna take this guy and we're gonna just melt that good together. Make a good solid little thing there. Take you a stick, push it flat. And then you can, once it cools off a little, you can mold this. Oh, God, I wouldn't do it when it's that hot, though. That's hot. Also, caution, melted plastic. It'll burn you. Okay, so here's the easy part. All we have to do now, when I say easy part, I mean, like, this is so easy, a caveman can do it. You take this cam lock, and the way I like to do this is go ahead and feed this through and run it. So then we've got a space here that we can sling this around. And all you're going to do is clip this back on itself. Get your string straight. And then you're just going to pull this tight. Now, I say this, watch me not be able to get this to cooperate now. This is actually the hardest time I've had with this, so bear with me. Alright. So there you've got a rope from tree to tree and you can make this tighter if you'd like basically that is pulling on itself this is tightened down on the tree you've got a good structural ridge line the next part of this we're going to take about one foot sections of this now i'm going to untangle this jacked up end <laughs> so i can rewrap this and use it like I said, I'm not a professional. I'm just an amateur learning and trying to help you guys. Okay, so I have cut out two, maybe a little bit longer than a foot sections. This is probably more like a foot and a half. Way overkill, you don't need this much. But this is what I'm gonna use because I'm gonna make a bunch of loops on these next knots. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna lay them side by side like this. All right, we're gonna come around, over, and through this loop. All right, now this can slide. I don't know if you can see that very well, that will slide. Now, we'll do the same thing on this side. We're gonna do, do a little loopy loop. I'm trying to see the screen, it's very small. Uh, so we're going to go under, around, and then back through this loop we created. I said that, and hang on, i got to watch what I'm doing here. I'm trying to educate and film. It's hard. It's hard. Under, make your loop, and then you're going to go through here. Now you can make these as nice as you want. Um, so basically you can make this loop small or what I, I'm just going to, you pull it in tight on itself. You've got a pretty strong loop. This is, 
a downsized version of how you actually attach um like if you fish with a in salt water you use a leader and then braided line um this is kind of the same principle of how you would attach those two lines so again we're just gonna lay this over and take this guy go around under over I'm sure I'm I'm not qualified to be a knot teacher here so we've got a good knot there come over here we're gonna repeat the same thing You're just making loops I'm trying to keep my fingers out of the way so y'all can actually see it but all right so we made a loop here same thing pull it tight locks in on itself now put you guys back on the headset i'm going to go back up to the ridge line i'm going to show you all the purpose of these all right so these are called prussic knots this is what the loops are for let's stick this up on the shoulder for a second prussic knot i have to remember now brain's not working i'm so sorry y'all I, I had a long day at work i'm gonna hold this up here you're gonna bring this under under you're just making loops of this too most of these knots are very simple i'm gonna do it about three or four times all right you want this main one up here on the outside of this which is not wanting to cooperate now with the knots on this video there's definitely some better knot videos out there um <laughs> i'm no professional knot tire so you want to pull that down cinch it down get it in on itself this isn't going to work for the crap because i got my knot all jacked up so yeah you can get it tight get it all pretty um of course like i say mine's not pretty but all right so you see you can pull like this pull like this it won't slide you can grab this knot and slide it now why is this important when we put oh i hope i've got enough of them actually um I don't think the new setup came with any. Oh, this might be interesting. So, this is gonna be used to hold the ends of our tarp. I'm gonna put an S beaner here. And when your tarp is up here, there's holes in these ends you're gonna clip this into. This is gonna allow you to move your tarp with the ridge line up, but once it is up, it will not move and what this does if you've got your hammock set up and say you had this tarp centered on this line last time but when you go to set up your hammock you end up a little bit this way or a little bit this way you can just grab these and slide them and get your tarp centered over your hammock again so you're going to repeat this same process with this other one we're going to go ahead All right, honestly what I should do is put the knot in there, but we're not gonna do that. Clip this on my pants real quick. So, same deal. We're gonna let's try to keep this centered this time. So, you're just gonna go through. Oh, getting hammock set up videos. Notifications. So round round around and this will make it easier if you let it come on down huh yeah. keep that a little smaller round like i say about four or five times a little more if you want to the more loops you get the better grip it's going to get but the harder it's going to be to slide i did figure that out so i did do that experimenting for you <laughs> Hey. <laughs> 
All right, that one turned out a little bit prettier. Not a lot prettier, but a little bit. So, I'm just gonna squinch this in here. Same squinch. All right, get it tight. Try to pretty it up a little here. A little OCD, I like them to be pretty and functional. So, same deal. Will not slide on the cord. I mean, I'm putting some force on that, but you can grab it and slide it. Throw our s beaner on that one. Alright, and I'm going to spread these out pretty far right now because I'm going to lay this tarp over top and then we'll get to the next step. Alright. So all I did is started throwing it up over there because we're going to finagle it here in a second. We're going to come to this end. We're going to clip this guy in here. It's attached. Not won't move. We're going to kind of center this as we walk down. This is actually a pretty big tarp. All right. So we can grab our knot slide it down here where we can get to it we're gonna hook this in and now once these are hooked in I don't take them loose like these stay on my tarp at all times and see how we can cinch that out and get that really tight and that's just the one end I mean that's without even finagling this other one and see how I mean that's Let's spread out it's tight it's not going anywhere now we're gonna do our tie outs and make them easy breezy so what we're gonna do for it we're gonna take this shock cord I'm gonna cut this eight foot piece in half once I get it out of here and in case you were wondering I am using the Academy bag as a trash bag I guess I can talk while I do this. So, my reasoning behind using the shock cord for these stakeouts. Buddy was talking to me about how, and mind you, this setup he's talking about is actually quite expensive. Um, he was discussing how, let's toast it. Now, same thing with this this melts faster than paracord but you get the idea but he was telling me how he was at camp and he has a very expensive tarp well someone wasn't paying attention and walked right through his tarp now well he didn't hit the tarp he hit one of the tie outs when he hit this tie out it tore the guy's tarp and I don't know about you guys but if somebody trips over my guy line and it tears the tarp instead of the line giving I'm gonna be a little upset and it's gonna take a hit to your wallet and yeah it's just no bueno I don't want you guys to have to experience this so what we're gonna do here is something really simple at one end we're gonna take these locks and we're just gonna feed a loop through. You're gonna fold it in half and shove it in there. Oh boy, that sounded bad. So, you've got this loop through here and actually I'm gonna have to undo that. We're gonna put a knot on this end so that it cannot slide back through this in just in case we're not paying attention so we're gonna loop this here we're just gonna make a regular knot just just something to increase this thing's diameter so that it will not go back through this hole all right so we got that out that won't go through the hole that's gonna be our adjusting point now we've got a loop here on this end we're just tying it to it nothing special 
no fancy knots just tie it through it however you want we'll give you free reign here just make sure it's not going to come off unless you need to take it off so we have this springy cord thing attached to our tarp now we'll come out here and put your stake in the ground Uh, hopefully somewhere there's not a rock or a root, which is exactly what I've got here. I'm just going to step on it and shove it in. Alright, so you've got your S-beaner down here. I hope the camera angle is good. You're just going to hoop your loop into your S-beaner. Now that tension's good. I'm okay with that. If you need to make this tighter... You know, somebody walks into this, your cord's going to give, but it's got your tarp held out, and it's going to take a good bit of rainwater or whatever to weigh it down. It's going to give with wind. But if you do want it tighter, you pull some of this in. We're going to get it to where we lock our tension up there. You're going to hold it on this back side and pull tight on the other and it's tighter so and you're just going to repeat that on the other side and you've got a good quick setup that somebody walks into that's going to give instead of tearing your tarp and that is my quick setup for a tarp i hope you guys like it i hope it helps you out heck let's take this off and talk to you i hope that helps you out i hope it makes your camping experience more enjoyable a lot of my stress when i started was dealing with the tarp because you had to tie a knot here, tie a knot here, tie a knot here, tie a knot here, tie a knot here. By the time you got it set up or taken down, you were like, mm, I just want to go home half time. But that's just me because I have to make it perfect and get happy with it. And most of the time it didn't happen. So if you guys like the video, give it a like. Um, if you want to, I should have more stuff like this coming. Give me a subscribe if you'd like, and I hope to keep helping y'all out, and hopefully show y'all some pretty cool adventures and trips. Um, we're finally getting some good weather in Georgia. Thank God. I mean, look at this. So, and mind you, in Georgia, we have had almost constant rain since October, and I'm not kidding like it's 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 been bad um we've all kind of been ready to just give up on life it's been bad and now we've got the national emergency with the coronavirus um a lot of state parks are shutting down a lot of travel shut down um i'm hoping i can still find some places to get out there soon and give you all some good videos but if not, I've got some more gear videos I can make for you guys. And it's time for me to get back to fishing as well. But hopefully this helped y'all out and you enjoy it. Or might even have some better ideas that you can share with me. Because this is the best hybrid I've come up with. And it's ideas borrowed and altered to my liking from a few different guys. So if you got something better, hit me with it and let me know. Have a good one. I didn't mean to point my finger at you guys. You guys are awesome. I love you. Keep it up.